This week, we're getting the news done as fast as possible. So, ain't nothing to it but to get into it. I'm DJ Alex, and this is your Hunky Vape Global 20 Vape Science Advocacy News for Labor Day weekend 2022. You know, the United States hasn't gotten around to adopting the menthol ban yet, but this fact hasn't stopped the police from killing an unarmed black man with a vape. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Plain as day. Ohio officer shoots and kills an unarmed black man while serving warrants. The chief of police said that the 20-year-old man appeared to be holding a vape pen or electronic cigarette before he was shot. The article goes on to talk about how the actual arrest took place and how the body cam footage shows the vape laying on the bed after the police officer shot this unarmed black man. Well, he was holding a vape, so technically he was armed with a vape. Trying to improve his health and trying to save his life by not smoking deadly combustible tobacco got this man killed. Because we know for a fact, if he was holding a pack of cigarettes, he wouldn't have gotten shot for it. Time to move on. Vaping, the lesser of two evils. The frontline smoking cessation worker says vaping may be the lesser of two evils. The survey of secondary school students has found one in five are vaping daily or several times a day and over half were vaping a higher nicotine dose than last year. That's led to concern over how it is being marketed. Action on Smoking Health board member Rebecca Rui Collins says she would not like to see a ban on vaping, given its effectiveness in smoking cessation, especially for the Maori. What we've got to do is we've got to be a bit compassionate in terms of working with our wuna out there. They've been bashed around enough being a smoker. We've got to be humane trying to help people quit smoking. And if vaping is what they wanna do, then I totally support it, she says. Matter of fact, let's see and hear her words right out of her own mouth. What we've gotta do is we've gotta be a bit compassionate in terms of working with our whanau out there. They've been bashed enough around being a smoker. We've got to be humane when we're trying to help people quit smoking. And if if vaping is what they want to use, um, then I I totally support it. There you go. Totally support it. Fantastic. Moving on. Health ministry not victimizing vape operators. So Dr. Noor Azmi This comes from Taipei. The health ministry is not oppressing electronic cigarette or vape operators following several series of raids and seizures conducted by the authorities. Deputy Health Minister Dutak Dr. Noor Azim Ghazali said raids on vaping premises were not recklessly carried out and were conducted for the specific reason based on existing regulations and laws. No one wants to oppress vape entrepreneurs. We want to keep the people healthy. I believe the action, the raid on vaping premises, was done for certain reasons. Interesting how he didn't specify what those reasons were, what violations they were going after. However, the article continues on talking about how we need to protect the public health and keep these vapes out of kids' hands. So we're going to go and slash the vape shops if that's what we got to do to get there. Sorry, folks. Vaping equipment stolen from Newport business, police appeal. Police have launched an investigation after items, including vaping equipment, were stolen. Police received a report of a burglary on Granville Street, Newport, after several items were taken from a commercial property. A number of stock items, including vaping equipment and money, were taken between 1.30 a.m. and 2 a.m. on Monday, August 15th. Officers would like to speak to the men pictured above who may be able to help with their inquiries. There you go, folks. Despite all the ads popping up over top of it, here is the man 
that the police are looking for. And if you happen to know who it is, contact the police and let them know. Moving on. Municipalities in Summit County continue discussions about how to use the collected nicotine taxes. Here we go. As budgeting processes begin across the county, discussions around how to distribute nicotine funds in Summit County have also begun, including in Breckenridge. Funding from nicotine tax is divided into two parts. Part one, funds have been directed to programs offered by Building Hope Summit County, Summit County Care Clinic, Summit School District, and Summit County Youth and Family Services. Part two, funding provides additional support intended to be used more broadly toward community health and wellness. Of part two funding, $1 million has been divided with $250,000 going to Building Hope, another $250,000 going to Summit County Care Clinic, and $500,000 going to the Family and Intercultural Resource Center. On July 28th, representatives from Summit County Public Health, Youth and Family Services, presented a 2023 budget, part one, to the town and county managers, says a memo from the assistant town manager, Shannon Hayes. The managers support funding the full request for part one programming. If approved, Breckenridge's portion would be approximately $450,000. Paid for by yours truly. And every one of you vapor vapors out there and every one of you out there still smoking. Here's what your money's going to. Is it actually going to help public health? If it did, I wouldn't have a problem with it. We all know how this money always ends up getting spent. And this article even goes into the fact that they don't want to rely on this as a continual source of funding. It is fantastic that they're getting these funds right now, but they know for a fact, at least that's what their belief is, that this funding is going to eventually disappear. It's going to dry up and we can't allocate this money to something that one day isn't going to have enough operating resources to continue doing the programs and services that it offers to the community. So what are they going to do? The article doesn't say. I guess you're going to have to wait and find out. Moving on. How to dispose of disposable vapes responsibly. For the sake of brevity, I'm going to skip over the majority of this article and just point out the fact that they even admit that, well, if you buy a disposable vape, like this one, and you can't take it apart in any way, well, you bought the wrong product. If you're concerned about vaping responsibly and disposing of these devices responsibly, well, you need to buy something a little bit better that you can break the components down. This piece, the tank, can be washed and disposed of in the recycle bin because it's all plastic and metal. This part here has three screws in the top you can remove and extract the guts of this device out under your table. Clip the wires for the battery. You can recycle the battery in the appropriate facility for batteries. And the rest of it, the plastic, can be chucked into the recycle bin for plastics. And the electronic components have to go to an electronic components recycler. What they actually tell you is you're better off with a big tank like this, regardless of whether you're mouth to lung or direct lung vaping, because these things don't go bad. And you can just keep on changing it, keep on putting your own stuff in it. And you don't have to have a piece of garbage that should be recycled end up in the landfill. Because if you can't take this apart, there's no way for you to be able to recycle this. Moving on. British American Tobacco engages consumers in new categories at FRA. Back Global Travel Retail, GTR, in participation with Gabur Henman and Frankfurt Media. I apologize, I don't speak German. 
has opened an inspiration store featuring leading vaping brand views, delivering an immersive experience for customers at the Frankfurt Airport Terminal 1. The new pop-up, which aims to engage and educate consumers in new categories, sees back create digital consumer journey for the first time with the Views brand, conveying the bold message that the product contains 99% less toxicants than cigarettes. The store is managed by a dedicated team of brand ambassadors trained to engage with consumers. In addition, to the innovative sensorial flavor experience, according to Bat. At the sensory bar, scent cards for each flavor, as well as drinks that match the flavor, are offered to consumers to help them gain a better understanding of the products they offer. In addition, customers are able to personalize their Views ePod 2 device with an engraving machine on site. Ladies and gentlemen, this is fantastic. This is the kind of representation the vaping industry has needed since it was created. An inspiration store. They've banned the ability for consumers to walk into a vape shop and try vaping flavors like they used to do back in the old days. So what did Bat Go do? Well, they formulated drinks that people could sample to find out what flavor works best for them. This is fantastic. Makes me want to take a trip to Frankfurt just to experience it. Moving on. Here we have another wonderful article created by Lindsay Stroud from the Taxpayers Protection Alliance. Even absent a flavor ban, youth vaping and smoking continues to decline in the Centennial State. The good news for kids and prohibitionist lawmakers in Colorado, youth tobacco and vapor product use declined between 2019 and 2021. This despite a massive and extensive legislative fight at the state capitol earlier this year that saw the defeat of a wide-ranging flavor ban which would have banned the sale of flavored tobacco and vapor products. She goes on into talking about the statistics that show the massive decrease in youth uptake of vaping products. And then talks about how people need to realize and people need to understand that it's time that these lawmakers listen to the data and see that the so-called crisis has been de-escalated without a prohibitionist law to make it happen. Moving on to some vaping science. The impact of the real cost vaping and smoking ads across tobacco products. Ladies and gentlemen, the exposure to the real cost vaping pre prevention ads led to more negative attitudes towards vaping compared with the control group. While exposed to the real cost, smoking prevention ads did not affect smoking-related outcomes compared with the control. It gets even better. Let me show you exactly what I mean. Far be it for me to try and surpass the capabilities of Clive Bates to accurately portray what is in this scientific paper? So let's take it from the horse's mouth once again. We have the evaluation suggesting that the real cost could be damaging to health. However, he talks about how their assessment isn't an adequate way to assessing the real cost campaign's actual damage. And then in summary, so the anti-smoking ads made the idea of stopping smoking by switching to vaping less appealing, whereas the anti-vaping ads made vaping less appealing, but made absolutely no difference in attitudes to smoking. Can anyone see how that makes things worse? The problem is these campaigns degrade the veil of the switch from smoking to vaping among people who smoke. 
The problem here is the researchers are caught in a mindset that blinds them to the harm reduction benefits and detriments. To them, it's all equally bad. And that's why we didn't jump right to the conclusion of this paper, because it is quite obvious that these people have a particular mindset and refuse to understand and accept vaping is harm reduction for smokers and can improve their health outcomes. It goes against the prohibitionist mentality. So, once again, here we have a wonderful piece of science that could have been monumental and only briefly glances by the fact that the real campaign is costing people's lives because they won't stop smoking. Moving on. Watch now what's killing the River Valley. Well, same thing that's been killing the River Valley for a long time. Let's be honest, folks. Smoking is the number one killer, regardless of where you live on the entire planet. And now they're just sitting here getting around to talking about how, well, smoking kills. If you smoke, you're hurting your body. We know that much. But did you know that just being around someone who smoked today is causing you bodily harm? You know how long it's been since I've seen an actual article discussing the real harms of smoking? It's not the vape that harms you. It's the smoking. Vaping is 95 to 99.5% safer than smoking. And this article goes on and continues to talk about all the things that we already know to be true about smoking. Secondhand smoke of cigarettes. When it's lit, nobody's puffing on it, but it's sitting there in an ashtray on a table, filling the room up with smoke that everybody has to breathe. You don't get that with the vape. It's fantastic. The only time that this device is operational is when you're using it to breathe in. And then the only thing exhaled is what your body doesn't absorb. Kind of easy to understand from just a common layperson's perspective how something like this could be 95% safer. 87% of a cigarette is combusted when the user is not inhaling it. Common sense. Moving on. And the reason we're moving on is because, quite frankly, Five Bates nailed it once again with this wonderful article published in Tobacco Reporter. So I don't know who's actually going to see it, except maybe some tobacco executives. And those of us in the arena trying to find and follow what's going on in the world. However, if there's only one article you're going to follow through on to follow up on yourself personally, this is the one to do it. How to save a hundred million lives. Quite frankly, I think he underestimated how many lives can be saved. Innovation and creative destruction in the evolving tobacco market will render cigarettes obsolete and end the burden of smoking related disease if we let it. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is an article you guys need to actually take the time to read. It's only going to take you like five minutes max. But it fantastically conveys and portrays the potential of the electronic cigarette to eliminate the analog cigarette. Covers all the details, all the facts, as Clive Bates is so capable of doing, fundamentally crushing every bit of knowledge and important information into a single article to convey the fact that we can adopt harm reduction now, even as simple as it may be to just let it flourish on its own, or it's going to do it on its own. You can try and stop it no matter how restrictive your laws are. This is the natural evolution away from combustible tobacco. And it works. And it's proven to work. And it's far more effective than any smoking cessation product available on the market. Combined, all these pressures will fundamentally change the tobacco market. Perhaps ruining some companies, but making revitalized giants out of others. A determined goal-driven strategist would shape these four environments to harness 
market dynamics for public health. That will mean challenging those purporting to represent public health interests while doing all they can to delay the market-based obsolescence of the cigarette. They may slow a necessary and inevitable transformation and cost thousands of lives. But ultimately, innovation and creative destruction will prevail. Every stakeholder involved should grasp the implications of these facts and act accordingly. Once again, if there's any article I can recommend you follow up on this week, this is it. Published in Tobacco Reporter, How to Save a Million Lives. And ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up the Global 20 Vape Science Advocacy News for Labor Day weekend, 2022. Sorry I couldn't put together a bigger, better, faster, more condensed version of the news. That's as professional as the rest of them usually are with all the little footnotes and side notes and pictures and all that other stuff. But I'm going to go take a mental health break this weekend. We're heading off to camp with my daughter. I'm going to go enjoy nature to de-stress and relax. However, I will be back next week for another fun-filled adventure into the oppression of harm reduction. So my voice is always, and I can't talk. I'll be having plenty of booplers for you here in two seconds. My wish is always peace, love, and a hunky vape to end cigarette combustion. Have a fantastic weekend. You know, the United States hasn't adopted the menthol ban yet, but this fact hasn't stopped police from killing an unarmed Mac Mac? A Mac man? I mean, they're awesome trucks and all, but is that a reason to kill somebody because they like a truck made by Mac? Cut.